Hello everybody. Uh, today I want to give you some notes on Unit 7, Lesson 4, which is about, according to your book, heredity. Heredity. Well, heredity is also kind of um, synonymous with another term called genetics. Well, heredity is just how genes or how your traits are passed on from generation to generation. Genetics is kind of the way that that happens. The one man that we need to talk about here was a man. He was actually a monk. And we need to talk about Gregor Mendel. You can read about him in your textbook. But he was a monk, and he devoted his life to the study of what he found to be a very odd thing that he noticed in his garden. He grew peas, as what we would eat as green peas. He raised them, but he noticed that some weird things happened. So, what he really noticed was... And now, here's the great thing about having some color. He noticed that if he had a yellow pea, and then if he had a green pea. Now, peas can do things, can do something that animals can't do. And that is they can self-pollinate. Plants are both male and female. They have the fe female and male sex organs. So, they can self-pollinate. Well, this yellow plant, he noticed that if he self-pollinated it, it would always give yellow offspring. Every single time. He noticed that if this one self-pollinated, it would always give green offspring. So, we will call this now the parent generation. Well, he had the brilliant idea of, well, instead of having them self-pollinate and always giving yellow and self-pollinate always giving green, he said, let's pollinate these two and let's see what we get like a true scientist. He kind of feared that they would all be maybe a yellowish green, but he had never seen yellowish green, so he did a controlled experiment. And what he found, he found that every single one was yellow. He thought that was kind of odd. Well, today we call this the first generation or the F1 generation. Well, he assumed, and we will see here in a bit that he was right, that all of these yellow ones were probably the same. So then what he did was he picked one of these and he self-pollinated it. And he wanted to see what he would get this time. And what he got this time were three yellow and one green. He got three yellow and one green. Well, now he has completely seen a trait that appeared to disappear, skip a generation. And you may have heard your parents or your grandparents talk and talk about how something skips a generation. Um, an example of this would be blue eyes in my family. My mom has blue eyes. My sister and I don't have blue eyes. My son has blue eyes. So blue eyes skipped me and my sister. Blue eyes skipped my generation. They're in the generation before, my mom. They're in the generation after, my son. But I, nobody has blue eyes. Well, he noticed this. 
So then he started thinking, well, maybe there's something different about all of these. So then, to his brilliance, he said, well, let's self-pollinate this one and see what we get. Let's self-pollinate this one and see what we get. And this one. And, of course, this one. This, of course, would be the F3 generation. So, what he ended up finding was this one gave all yellow, kind of like this one would have if it would have self-pollinated. Well, now this one's doing that. Then he noticed that this one gave three yellow and one green and this one gave three yellow and one green. Yep. And green. And then he thought, noticed that this one gave all green. Right now you're looking at this going, that makes no sense. But this is the brilliance of Gregor Mendel. He actually started doing other traits of a pea plant. He looked at flower color, seed shape, all sorts of traits, about seven traits of pea plants, this being the pea pods, what we eat, and um, he started to kind of notice a pattern. And just because of what was self-pollinating and what was cross-pollinated. One big thing we'll see, just like the number one half is always going to be part of genetics, we will see this ratio. And by the way, ratios just tell you how many to how many. It's a pure counting idea. So he noticed this ratio of three to one, three yellow to one green. And there we see it again, three to one, and three to one. He noticed this quite a bit. Well, let's quickly talk about some vocab words. Some vocab you need to know now, um, is homozygous. We have talked for a while with meiosis about you get half your genes from mom and half your genes from dad. Well, there are different versions of those genes. Those versions of a gene are called alleles. Well, if the alleles are the same, we call it homozygous. If we say that they're different, then we say that they are heterozygous. So different alleles. Well, a couple other words. Phenotype is what you actually see. So observable, observable traits or trait. The phenotype might be brown hair, blue eyes, straight hair. Um, whatever you see is the phenotype. The gen genotype is the genetic reason that that happened. The genetic makeup for that trait. So, let's look quickly at some alleles and genotypes and phenotypes and we can start seeing why Mendel saw what he did. If yellow, oh and we also need a couple of more, we will now say that yellow is what is called the dominant trait. 
it dominates over green, which is the recessive trait. So, um, and we will always use the, yellow, the letter Y to show this. So for this, what we're about to do, capital Y is the dominant trait, little y, little y is the recessive trait. So what we will do is we will show what Mendel saw, but now we have a genetic reason. If we have something that is big Y, big Y, it is yellow. If we have something that's big Y, little Y, it's still yellow. It's not yellowish green. It's still yellow because the big Y dominates over the little Y. The only way to get two little Ys, that's going to make it green. So yellow and green are the phenotypes. Big Y, big Y, big Y, little Y, little Y, little Y are the genotypes, which are made up of two alleles. And then what we call this, this one is homozygous dominant, this one is heterozygous, and this one is homozygous recessive. So, building up to it, but now let's actually show what Mendel saw. We said two slides ago that he had a pure yellow one. That if it self-pollinated, it always gave yellow. Well, now we see why. It always was passing on that capital Y. And then he crossed it with one that always gave green. Well, now we see why this one always was green, because that's the only allele it passed on. And it always gave little y, little y. So what happened when he crossed them? and he saw all yellow, what happened there was he got big Y, little y. And when he got big Y, little y in all of them, they were all yellow. So then when he self-pollinated this one to get four, what he then saw was big Y, big Y, big Y, little y, big Y, little Y, little Y, little Y, which explains now why we see that three to one ratio of yellow, 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 green. So then when he self-pollinated this one, he got all yellow because they were all big Ys. When he self-pollinated these two, we see that three to one ratio again of big Y, big Y, big Y, little Y, big Y, little Y, little Y, little Y. And then duplicate that again, because that's what happened here. Big Y, big Y, big Y, little Y, big Y, little Y, little Y, little Y. And then when he did this one, it, all it could do was pass on little y's now, and we saw all green. You look at that and you go, okay, you may see a bunch of letters, but if we back up two slides and look at this, and then go forward and look at this and match up this diagram, to these colors and what they mean, if you go back and forth and see this, and then go forward and look at this, they match up perfectly, which is why Mendel was so brilliant in everything he did.